Hey everybody, I'm Mike and this is Mike Art Shop. Today we are back on the Bridgeport Mill once again. Wasn't the plan for today, but the weather changed my plan. So we're going to work on getting the uh, mill bed uh, stoned down and smooth and then work on tramming in the head. This is going to be a fun episode and hopefully a little bit educational. The whole premise of our channel is spending the day here in the shop with me with whatever I'm doing and I was going to work on an outside project with you guys today, but yeah, it's pouring rain and uh, well, the shop is a mess right now and I need to get that cleaned up, but I really want to move forward on getting that quick change tool post and get rid of that lantern style tool post over on my lathe. And in order to do that, I really need to have this mill uh, dialed in, calibrated, set up, trammed, and all of the stuff that needs to happen. Now, in our last episode, we zeroed everything back to uh, ballpark zero on all of the gauges. I'm sure you saw that episode. And so today, even though it wasn't my plan, we are going to uh, take it forward so that we can start to machine what we need to machine to put that quick change tool post on the Powercraft lathe. Uh, so that's what we're doing. If you look up close and personal here at the mill bed, you can see that it's got all kinds of drill holes and stuff in it. Um, I considered what it would take to uh, get this mill bed reconditioned, but I did a lot of research. And one of the things I discovered was you don't really want to get this machined. Um, reason being as it will... Uh, thinning this thing down even a hundred thousandths of an inch can make it warp. And we certainly don't want warpage on our mill bed. So what I'm going to do is just take out the stone and some oil and just stone this thing down real quick and just get all the burrs off so that we can tram it in. Uh, one thing I did read said that on some of these drill holes that are here, if you clean them out real good and you use some JB weld, you can fill them in if, you, if they really bug you. Um, that is an acceptable way. And, and they also pointed out that, you know, having a perfectly, uh, flat bed is important, but if there's you know, over the years of things getting machined into it, uh, that's fairly normal. And it's more of an annoying thing than a functionality thing, because you're usually putting, things in some kind of fixturing when you're setting it in here. So I may toy with that idea of filling this in with JB Weld. Some people might blow a gasket over that, but a lot of old, old school machinists said that you just fill that stuff in and then file it smooth and stone it, and it's perfectly acceptable to do that. So obviously, it won't be magnetic if you do that, but all right, let's uh, get the stone and get some oil, and we'll get this thing uh, going. So the objective with this here is to just get all of the burrs and stuff knocked off of this bed. It's not to, you know, make it perfect and really flatten it or anything. But any any of this stuff here that might have some burrs on it, we want to knock that stuff down so that it's not interfering with our tramming process. The body man in me can definitely feel this thing has some warpage from over tightening the vise. So we could potentially, you know, put this in with a, um, a cutter and, you know, machine the whole thing down. But I don't want to do that. Again, we're just trying, this is mostly what we use to mount things like the vise and the rotary tables and things like that too. So we went over that with the rough stone. It feels pretty good. So now we're going to flip it 
and use the finer stone just to get off any little finer burrs and I think we'll be good to go. Again, we're not trying to make it perfect. We just want to have a decent smooth surface where we don't have any burrs that are going to potentially mess up tramming this thing in. Oh, it feels really good. No catches across the table. A couple little high spots I can see. But I'm not feeling half of what I was before. It's not exactly the proper dial indicator to be using for this, but it's the one that I have, and it's the one we will use. The best one to use for this would be the one with the uh, leverage style, not the straight in and out style. So this will pr provide some unique challenges, but uh, we will get it. But we need to get this off of here and onto that. And it's being a liquor of the pot. So I'm going to stuff out of my way here so I can get after it. <clears throat> Tool is stuck. All right, I got to get help. So I got my dial indicator put on here now. We need to get this mounted to the head like so. Okay. Now we need to make sure that everything is nice and tight. And it looks like our throw is a little too much. So we can loosen this stuff up and bring it in like this. Let's bring this down. Let's get this square. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to bring our table up a little bit. Let's give that a crack and see how that goes. Okay, we got some pretty good engagement there, and I want it to just touch. Okay, why is that doing that? Okay, my indicator has got an issue. That should work. So we're zeroed out here now. Mm, it's sticking a little bit. Don't like that. Yeah, my throw is way too much, but it'll give me an idea anyway, but I, I can't check that completely. Um, yeah, we've got about 40 thousandths there, I think. So uh, let's bring that back. No, well, it's about right. All right, this thing is really funky. Hmm. Gotta figure that out. This thing is sticking down here at the low end. I don't like that. Let's try that. This is not ideal. But it'll work. Okay, so we gotta shorten this up so that I'm here and here. So tramming it means you're making it square this way and this way. And one of the things you don't want to do is try to do both at once. Uh, you will drive yourself forever insane trying to do both of those things at once. So I think we need to, uh, eh, that might work. Yeah, the other, the other style would definitely be much easier to work with. But oops, that's the wrong church. But you work with what you have. I don't have $150 to buy one of those lever style indicators so you do what you got to do okay 
let's see how that is. Bring it back around. Ooh, I don't like that at all. I don't like the way that's twisting on me. Now I got too much throw this way, so I need to get this centered on here. Okay. Okay, that'll work. Now we're on the, the bed in both places. So, okay, there's no collet in there, so we got to figure out the best way to uh, rotate this without damaging anything. Get this set up. I'm afraid that my accuracy is just going to work, and I'm going to have to end up with one of those other indicators, but we'll do what we can. Okay, so we're at zero there. And we're off the table there. How the hell did I do that? Okay, we're on the table there. Don't want to pull it like that. All right, now we're on both places. All right, let's get everything tight. Hope for the best. Too much, too much play in this, and I don't know why. Oh, right there. I see. This one's not tight. Oh. Okay, that's better. Now, let's zero it. We're zero. Okay. Now, I'm not claiming that is going to be very accurate. I'm just doing the best I can with what I have. So now let's check our side to side this way. This, I expect, will probably be off. Okay. Yeah, we're off about mm, probably eighty thousands, something like that. So that means we need to adjust the head this way a little bit. So let's get things loosened up and we'll get that adjusted. this side and when I spin it around it's zero on the other side and I've done that five times repeatably so we are golden so we are virtually flat so I just need to tighten down my nuts and bolts here and we should be good we'll run one more check here in just a minute I know it's a challenge when you don't have exactly the right tools for doing something and you have to compromise. So therefore, when you're doing something like this, repeatability, don't just trust one. You shouldn't just trust one anyway. But we're zero there. Okay, I've got it within about five thousands. I'm going to call that good with this indicator. That's the best I'm going to do. My actual lines look good. So... Uh, at some point we will pick up one of those leverage indicators and do it with that but at least we've got it close and uh, you know we're still going to have to do some squaring and so forth with the uh, when we put a vise in and so forth but at least this is a start and uh, I'm not uncomfortable with that so we're according to our line over here we're just about where it was when I reset everything actually so that also tells me that this machine is probably off just a little bit so there we go that's what I did again I know it's not the right tool so don't go flaming me down in the comment this is not the easiest way to do this if you had one of the indicators that was like this and had a little lever this way it's much much easier to do it I don't have one of those and I need to get this set up close enough so I can work on that um, 
tool post adapter for the lathe because I need to take I need to take this plate and mill a couple of slots on the edges so that it'll slide into the T-post over there on the lathe. So anyway, that's it. Get everything put away and get our bed oiled down again with the uh, surface shield from PB Blaster so that it doesn't rust. Get this cleaned up just a little more just because we've been fiddling around with it here. But overall, I think we're in a pretty good place now for our next job here on the mill. So that'll probably be what's coming next on the channel. We'll see. But uh, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, we will get the right style indicator and get more accurate as we do more projects that require more accuracy. But we're not there right now. And for what we're doing here, this is going to be more than fine. One other final note here as I was wrapping up I wanted to mention is most of the work that I'm going to be doing here only needs to be a tolerance of 50 to 100,000. So I'm building brackets and even making, you know, tool post mounts and stuff like that. This is not high holy have to be within, you know, several microns. So if we're going to do a job that requires a lot more accuracy, we will definitely um, do a better job of getting things measured in. But again, my goal is to start moving in that direction, get things dialed in so that I can start doing some rud rudimentary work on the mill to get my chops back on it because it's been a long time. Uh, so I'm really comfortable with this. I went around and looked at the zero indicators that are built into the mill. And uh, like I said, they're pretty accurate. The one was off just a little bit when I zeroed it out the other day. And it's right back to where it was. So that tells me I've got to be close to, uh, to where that one belonged for that head being square. Um, so no worries on that. And the other thing is, I was just chatting with Chris a little bit, and he mentioned too, you can always measure your part as well to see if there's something that is not exactly right. And you can compensate there as well as you're machining something, as long as you're not on your final cuts or as long as you've not cut too much away. So, you know, it's not just to set the machine up and forget about it. And then I can start machining because if we're going to put a, 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 a vice back in there, we've got to get that square to the head anyway. And so there's a lot more to it uh, than appears. I rarely just put something right on the table to machine it. Uh, I don't even know if I have those clamps to tell you the truth. I probably do. I've got so much D-up right there they are. So there's the tool clamps there if we needed them. But uh, most of the time, it's putting something in the vise or things like that. So, all right. so uh, I appreciate you being here. And as always, we will catch you on the next one. Rah!